Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Derek and I cover Python programming tutorials. In this one, we're covering the selection sort algorithm. Let's jump over to an animation to describe what this does. The way selection sort works is we're trying to find the minimum value in a list. So we're setting the first number as the minimum and then comparing it to every number to its right. As soon as we come across the number that is lower than the minimum, we assign that as the new minimum and continue on. At the end of our iteration, our minimum value will be moved to the left. Once we have that minimum value, we can divide our list into two sublists. The list to the left will be the sorted items, and the list to the right will be the unsorted items. This prevents us from having to do comparisons on items that we've already sorted. We'll continue doing these iterations, taking the minimum value from the unsorted sublist and placing it in the last position of our sorted sublist. Compared to the bubble sort algorithm, this one performs much nicer. That's because the number of swaps that this one needs to perform is much lower than that of the bubble sort algorithms. Finally, once we get to the end of the list, we have a completely sorted sequence of elements. If you would like to try to write this on your own before we dive into the Python solution, pause the video here and come back. Let's go ahead and see the Python code for this one. Let's open up a text editor, and I'll try to explain this in a way that makes sense to a beginner. We could definitely optimize this algorithm, but it's more important that we understand the logic first. We'll create our function. We'll call it selection sort. And this will take in a sequence that we'll call list A. Now we need to specify an indexing length. So we'll say an indexing length will be equal to the range from zero to the length of our list A minus one. We're saying minus one here because once we only have one item left in that unsorted list, we don't need to do a comparison on it. Instead, we can assume that it's the highest value because it's the last item left. Now we'll create a for loop. So we'll say for every element in the indexing length, we want to set a min value equal to the i position. So this is because each time we do an iteration, we want that first element in the unsorted list to be the default min. This will likely change as we do comparisons, but we need that default to do those comparisons. Now we'll say a second for loop. So we'll say for every element in the range of i plus one, so all the elements to the right of these positions to the length of our list a. So these are all the elements to the right of where we currently are in our indexing length. We'll say if the list a in the j position is less than our current minimum value then we need to replace that min value. We'll say min value is equal to j. So we're going through all the elements to the right of where we currently are on the index, and if we find something smaller, change that to the min value. This is powerful because we don't need to do a swap every time we find a new min value. Instead, we can just go through and find the min value this way, and then do the swap using the min value's position at the very end. Now at the end of these iterations, we need to do that switch. We'll do that by saying if min value no longer no longer equals i. So we're saying that if we find an item that has a lower value than our default, then we need to switch those items. We can do that item switch by saying list a in the min value position and then list a in the i position. We'll go ahead, I'll move this up a little. We'll go ahead and do the opposite. So list A in the I position first, and then list A in the min value position. Now we just need to return this list. We'll say return, return. We'll make sure this is lined up with our for statement. Return list A. Now we'll print, we'll use that function. So selection sort, and then we'll pass it a random list. I was typing some numbers here, but you can use whatever you like. Now we'll open up a terminal and we'll execute a file by saying python3 selection sort.py. We see that we get back the list using the selection sort method. The selection sort is a lot better than the bubble sort. This is because we're cutting down the number of item switches that we need to do. In this one, we only switch once per iteration, if that. Sometimes we don't even need that switch. Whereas in the bubble sort, we're switching all throughout the list each time we iterate. We're also being more efficient every iteration. 
Since we're creating the two sublists, we no longer have to iterate through the entire length of our list. Now we only go through the unsorted portion. Our complexity is still rather high though because we're using two for loops. We'll look at other algorithms that get this complexity down. If you have any questions or comments about this script, please let me know. Until next time.